astronomers, in their generations of work advancing our understanding of our place within our universe, provide an inspiration to pandeism. Astronomy has always had a role to play in theological discourse. From the time of the earliest records of the ancients, it was supposed that the lights in the night sky represented mystical forces. Elaborate systems were imagined to explain their significance and their supposed influence on human affairs. Ptolemy of Alexandria devised a model of the sun and planets which placed the Earth at the center of our universe, orbited by the moon, then Mercury and Venus, then the sun and the rest of the known planets, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. All of this, in the Ptolemaic model, was surrounded by a moving sphere of fixed stars. We now know that Ptolemy's model was wrong, but not for any lack of intellect on Ptolemy's part. Instead, it was a well thought out model that largely accounted for what could be observed in that age, and with the prevailing theological supposition, of our Earth sitting at the center of our universe. Nicholas Copernicus pioneered the next great leap in astronomical knowledge. Shortly before his death, Copernicus published his heliocentric theory, placing the Sun at the center of our universe. This late publication was necessary due to the prevailing religious sentiments of the time. Although we now know the heliocentric model to be true, the monolithic Christianity of the era required the Earth to be at the center of the universe, and so, truth was suppressed in the name of religion. Following the work of Copernicus, Galileo Galilei determined, as well, that the Sun, and not the Earth, was the central point for the planets. His work was based on the most practical level of research, improving the design of telescopes, and then observing the sun, moon, and planets through them, and reporting his observations. For his discoveries, he was condemned by the church, which famously declared the theory that the earth orbits the sun to be, quote, false, and contrary to scripture, unquote. But, it is not so widely remembered, that he was equally condemned for discovering spots on the sun, craters on the moon, other moons circling other planets, and that the planets, themselves, were not perfect orbs, as the church required. Under threat of torture by religious officials, Galileo recanted, but, naturally, recanting what is a truth has never worked to make it untrue. Johannes Kepler lived in the same era as Galileo but in a place less dominated by religious oppression. Working in the observatory of another great astronomer, Tycho Brahe, Kepler sought to solve the riddle of the apparent retrograde motion of Mars, that is, the tendency of Mars to sometimes appear to move backwards in its orbit. In doing so, Kepler hit upon another great discovery, that the planets did not orbit the sun at a uniform speed, or in perfect circles, or exactly centered, as the religious leaders required. The planets instead orbited in eccentric ellipses, with orbital speed changing in conjunction with the distance from the Sun, which was simply a focal point, and not at the exact center of their orbit. Sir Isaac Newton's theory of gravity was initially set forth in great measure to explain the means by which bodies in orbit were maintained in that way. This paved the way for the theological theory of deism by demonstrating that the constant hand of the creator was not at all needed to explain the motions of the planets, but that celestial bodies could instead be maintained in their angular momentum entirely by the clockwork operation of celestial mechanics, 